Cool. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to episode two of Coffee with Dillian. Uh, today, I am at Father Coffee with a uh, good friend and fellow Zimbo, Ndu Mr. Spanda. Uh, he's got other names, but he'll tell himself. Yeah. So, welcome to the program. <laughs> <laughs> what up? It's Ndu It's good to be here. So, who are you and what do you do? My name is Ndumiso Michael Kakiso Omawale Sibanda. What do I do? I am a, a visual artist, um, a multidisciplinary visual artist. I photograph, I make films, I write. Um, but right now, uh, my films and television pay the bills. Hey, that's good. Paying the bills is very, very important. So, what got you into this whole life of film and stuff? What, what got into your stuff? Just storytelling. I think it's 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 definitely passed on to me like uh, a, you know a generational thing. My parents are creative. They're creative in what they do, be it the way they raised me, um, the way they cook at home, to the fact that both of them write. So for me, a long time ago, I realized I wanted to be I wanted to trap moments within my life, encounters, yeah. beautiful encounters I've always had. So I'm not really always one to keep a diary and write. Oh dear diary, this just went down. Um, I love to tell people about it, and better yet, I love to film it, and that's and that's that, and that's where filming came. I've found myself in interesting spaces quite often. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's very interesting. Uh, and then your so you're from Auckland, right? Uh, yes. When did you move here? So, my family moved here in 1990. My parents moved here. They just graduated at UZ, and they were going to further their studies at UCT. They got a scholarship. And they brought me, this kid, along with them to Cape Town. Um, well, they first came on their own, and then they brought me like a couple of years later. And I've been here since the early 90s. Yeah, that, that's always how it is, yeah. you know. You come through and you make a base. And then I followed suit, and I've kind of been living a dual Zimbo South African life ever since. I mean, definitely heavier on the South African side, but um, everything we do within our home is Zimbabwean. Then we step out of our front door and we're in South Africa. Yeah, no, that's very interesting. I mean, also me being as mother, also, uh, like at home, it's just my work. And I'm just happy, it's a bit diff different, but yeah, that's very, very interesting. And then, in terms of movement, for you, uh, as, as part of your work, you travel a lot, like a hell of a lot. <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot of stamp. How does that now affect your work? Or yeah, impact your work? That's interesting. So, you know, often under the gaze of figuring it out. I used to lose a lot of opportunities. I think the way it affects my work is that I have to know exactly what it is I want to do with my time. So I've been I've been very lucky that in the last three years I've been able to see 49 countries. But, yeah, 49 countries. But what that does is it feeds your sense of travel, your sense of purpose, I guess, to a degree. But what it also does is it takes you out of the loop and rotation yeah. of the type of work that maybe you've been building yourself up to doing. So then you have to adopt an approach. Either you have to go with the flow and allow your skill set to conjure up something you can't see, you know, um, a, 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 an opportunity that you don't expect. Um, or you'll just wallow in the fact that you're doing dope stuff here, but when it stops, where will you be in the scheme of the momentum you're trying to, 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 to build up in your career that you're trying to follow? So the way to fix my work is like this. I need to work on things knowing what it does for me and my career path. Every story I tell while I'm away, if I'm away in a business meeting in Zimbabwe, why not shoot a short film in my off days so that when I come back, I'm still in the conversation of a short film space, but I've also had the opportunity to travel and gain those experiences as well. I mean, that's interesting. 49 countries, so... Which one is your favorite country so far? Is it a favorite country or is it a country where you found the most, how can I say, uh, most life in? Besides Zimbabwe and Sasha, of course, because these are two countries. But out of the other 40, 47 countries, where did where, where, where you really enjoy the most? Maybe it's becoming a, a bit of a cliche now, but Accra was like, was like an extension of me. When I got to Accra, that, that thing of push your craft at all costs became more apparent. Push your craft at all costs. Um, perfect your craft. Become really good at it. Keep playing with it. 
um, and and hustle it, put it out there. So Accra, I met some of the most amazing creatives who are still doing amazing stuff today. All over Instagram, um, you know, you always meet a creative who was linked to someone you met in, in Ghana, and you then now share space and conversation based on that. I love Accra, I love Ghana, I love Senegal as well. Um, I really enjoy there are quite a few places. Gabon was amazing for me. Gabon, Gabon, I spent a lot of time there. Um, I, I, I think in places where people are really reliant on their own back to pursue their interests, I found resonated with me the most. And that's where I saw it in Kinshasa. That's where I saw it in, in, in Accra. That's where I saw it in. I didn't get to spend a lot of time in Nigeria, but obviously that Nigerian hustle is legendary. Um, and yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you, you, have, you have the other name. That's not your birth name, is it? It's not my birth name. Oh, it is not my birth name. In fact. Uh, I, I probably have to sit down with my parents and tell them why I now have this name called the Moale, and it's simple. I got to Nigeria and I was filming this artist named Madame Nike. Madame Nike. She's got an art gallery there. She's well known. So Madame Chief Nike Okonduye. And essentially, she thought I was Nigerian, so she was chatting to me, and then, and then she flipped the language, and then I told her, sorry, I don't understand, I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> so after we spent time together, she was like, no, I'm Rokoyo Omowale, which means the sun has come home. And as a storyteller, it's nice to pick up a name, you know, it's kind yeah. of like, it is better than a diary. It's like, yeah, no, I picked up a name over there. Yeah. Omowale, the sun has come home. Yeah, that's that's really interesting. And then in terms of your your, your work, I mean, you, you collaborate a lot with a lot of people in terms of film work and photography and stuff. What is your process of collaboration and what do you think you take out of, out of those collaborations? What, what have you seen come out of it? Has it been great collaborating with so many people or, or has it just been like, okay, I do it and then it's done and then what? Interesting. I, I think um, I collaborate with people in manageable bite sizes. So I think all the, my collaborations are as big as my jaws can open and as sharp as my teeth can chew. I can see myself achieving everything I need to achieve within a collaborative space. So I haven't collaborated on anything where every step I feel like I'm walking into a new unexplored territory, which is one thing for me. I think my process is very much... Um, at this point in time, I'm challenged by the fact that new people bring new narratives to whatever it is you're collaborating on. So I'm enjoying that space of, you know, someone else brings magic to a production. Um, I, I, I haven't answered yet, but I think as my collaborations move on, I want to move into that space of, of collaborating on bigger projects yeah. where I'm not in such a safe zone so much. Um, but I do get to collaborate with a lot of people and um, they bring a lot, a lot of stuff to the table and that's where it's fun for me. I don't know if I've answered your question. You, you did, but are they, do you think there are... So what are the pros and cons of collaboration for you? Because I, I find myself currently... I'm struggling with a lot with collaboration. I'm trying, I've been over collaborating for a very long time because through creative nest things. Uh, so now I'm trying to figure out a way to do stuff on my own, my own without having to rely on someone else to participate in the process and stuff, which is very difficult. The cons for me are that every move I make is not from a money perspective. I, I think <laughs> there's no financial return when it comes to collaborating yeah. as yet, you know. Um, collaborations right now are putting two of your favorite colors in one thing, in one palette and seeing what comes out of it, you know what I mean? The only thing that really comes at the end of the day is someone saying, oh, that's my new favorite color. But besides that, I don't own the colors. Yeah. Um, I don't own the color spectrum, so the, I don't get to feel the collaboration from a money perspective, but... I sleep better at night. <laughs> I sleep better at night for collaborating. For collaborating. And uh, I mean, that's very interesting. I mean, we live in a world where young African creators are telling great stories. But I, I always find that uh, there's a lack of collective action in our, in our execution. Also, because we're all currently facing the same challenges, almost. It's always money, funding, resources, tools, and all spaces travel money, all that stuff. So kind of similarities, but why, why aren't we kind of galvanizing together a lot? Why, why, do you think that, why do you think that's still missing? Or are you finding it's okay now? No, no, I... I do you know... It's interesting, I... I, I there are different playing grounds, okay? 
input out there. So the media we live in today pushes out Johannesburg as the executive place to be if you're creative or a thinker or you want to be something to a degree. Okay. And often our ideas, unless we are very comfortable with where we are, our goal always is to be there or to be with that next person or we create this 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 pedestal that before we can achieve together we need to get to that point and often we keep reaching these points and these pillars but we never collaborate with each other or bring each other in we just keep with that i i mentality we stop working with each other so i think maybe i hate the word grassroots because there are stories people talk about at grassroots level but essentially um we need to stop right now stop and think to yourself where is there room for me to collaborate with someone where is the room for me to expand my understanding of someone else's world and and let's and let's bring each other into it without looking at you know in two weeks time or being in a position to do this or in one month or being in a position to do this because essentially we pass by opportunities that could be fruitful to everyone um merely because we keep rushing to the next thing or, or getting to that place before I can affect change. The people that are affecting change are affecting it because they can right now and they're doing it. Yeah. They aren't sleeping until the change is being affected. So, well, do you want a good night's sleep but wake up and still be in a mess? <laughs> or do you want to have a difficult sleep but then the world we live in is one that we know for a fact that we're progressing together, you know? Yeah. Let's sleep later. I think that's quite important, you know, to, to understand the value of, of coming together. No, it doesn't necessarily have to mean to actually work together. It could just be a catalyst for someone else's uh, work or, or life or as a creative. Particularly, I think, as, as young black creatives, we need to be catalysts for each other's careers and all yeah. that stuff. More than, afraid. yeah. No, don't be afraid of it and, and stuff. And for, for you, I was actually about, about fear. In terms of fear, are you a very fearful creative or are you, okay, jump first and then deal with it later. <laughs> so I think for your films, like, do you just, okay, write the script, shoot the film, whatever happens to him, is it, or is it, okay, the pro- is there a process now to it? Yeah, interesting. I think, um, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid of anything that is part of my creative process. Um, time, It's one thing that I think makes us feel fearful in one way or another. So the way time manifests its fear for me is that my turnaround time with my ideas is sometimes way too long. You know what I mean? An idea, you think of it instantly. You progress with it to a point of where I'm willing to pick up a camera within hours. But then... The turnaround of the idea could take six, seven months, you know what I mean? So I I, 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 I think I think I want to have that Tupac attitude. I don't know, I've moved away from Christmas, but I want to have that Tupac attitude or that Roots attitude. I read somewhere that the Roots were like sitting on 300 songs and they were trying to decide, you know, which ones will go into the next album. But they had abundance, they had a sense of... Um, what was the question again? No, uh, around it. Are you a fearful person or are you just going there and do it, get it done and all? No, I'm going there and do it. I'm going there and do it. Yeah. And I think I, I, I would like to have people or, 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 or align, align the energies around me that allow me to take my go and do it attitude and then help me with that let's make it sustainable this going to attitude yeah. you know what I mean because I don't really think about what happens afterwards I've become a bit impatient I launch my films online because one should have the patience to go through all these circuits yeah. and, and festivals and stuff but I launch online for everyone who's going to see it maybe that's the downfall I'm impatient in that part so that means you need a producer <laughs> that means I need a producer but once you get one you start to realise you haven't needed need, need, you, you haven't ever really needed a producer. What you needed to is to organize. But but isn't, isn't, but you can't do everything yourself. No, you can't. It? So that's the point of a producer. That is the point of the producer. Because you're a director. <laughs> I'm a director, but can someone be one thing? And I don't think in the current state of economy yeah. where we are, you cannot be one thing. If I was just a director saying, that's what I do, I'm directing, yeah. I wouldn't be able to have cheese in the fridge. 
because I know for a fact the other little things often give me cheese yeah. and the directing is kind of like you know something that I have <laughs> that doesn't make me money sometimes you know yeah. what I mean um, but yeah I would love to be in a position where I sit down and say I'm a director this is what I do and I yeah. look away <laughs> Yeah, now, I mean that's interesting. So in terms of making money, paying the bills, I mean that's very important. I think as, as, as young queers, but particularly as young black queers, we don't we we, we sit and see that very late. So in terms of making money, how do you really make money? If you want to give away those secrets, <laughs> how do I really make money? How do you so how do you pay rent, pay the bills? And stuff? By not paying my taxes. <laughs> <laughs> I pay the rent by not paying my taxes. Yeah. I'm kidding, but I'm not. But um, how do I make money? I I. Um, I believe what's worked for me is being in many conversations at once yeah. about many different things. When I say conversations, I mean many different skills that I do work for themselves in many spaces. I do voiceovers, I do, I'm, I'm a photographer, I direct television, I direct branded content. Um, what else? I, 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 I shoot shit, you know, and I own my own gear. So I can always shoot stuff. So I, I'm, I'm counter revolutionary to my bank balance in the sense that yes, I'm able to make money from directing or doing that. But for me, paying the bills isn't necessarily paying my rent in the month. The bills are my goals, and my passions, and my dreams. So paying the bills for me is not to survive. I have to pay my rent. But paying the bills is is paying is paying for for where well, whatever it is is gonna further my concepts and my ideas, you know. Um, if I'm making a film set in Yeovil, paying the bills is 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 is, is, is making money so I can lock down the, the location fees. That's paying the bills yeah. to go and film there. So paying the bills is always in line for with what I'm doing and what I'm planning. That's paying the bills. Okay. And then, well, I'm thinking now, you don't drink coffee, right? You do. I do drink coffee, but I'm not crazy over it. Why aren't you crazy over coffee? <laughs> I'm not crazy over coffee because I think, you know, certain things make my heart beat very fast, and coffee is one of them. <laughs> hey, there's a coffee. Anyway, uh, thanks for the chat. Really insightful. Uh, any famous last words? Any famous last words? You know, I recently watched this documentary by Usman Sembeni. It's called Sembeni. Oh, it's about Usman Sembeni called Sembeni, the father of African cinema. Now, I've loved this guy for so long. So I watched this documentary and I felt it just re-energized to me more than ever that we have to own the narrative. We have to tell our own stories at all costs. If we don't tell our stories, like he says, Africa will soon d d disappear. So the important thing is this, control the narrative the way you see it. Otherwise, one day you'll look back and the narrative will have nothing to do with you, but it'll be based in your kitchen. Very true. Amazing. Oh, on, on that actually, how important African language is in your storytelling? African languages are important in terms of creating an atmosphere for the world of my stories to take place in. So, um, uh, the unspoken subtext is amazing in all films. We love to make films that aren't too wordy, but subtext is often carried around through little things. If you're angry and you're angry, you can click, you can click, you can make a sound like and show contempt and anger the situation without doing much so in order to convey messages or compound um, 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 actions around certain actions African languages create that atmosphere that my stories or meals can be edible in they can they can be enjoyed in you know they can be caressed in and like I said our stories will disappear if we don't own the narrative, African languages create that bed, that soft cushion, that layer for the narrative to exist. Otherwise, I might as well take the story of Shaga and, and set it on the moon and make it anyone's story. But our languages make it our story. You know what I mean? Yeah. Merely dressing someone by art department does not make it that story. <laughs> art department's a beautiful thing, but at the end of the day, I think the, 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 the narratives need grounding in some kind of way, you know. And that's the language coming. Yeah. And that's the language, or the, the, that is the, the nuances, the nuances of that language. That's what Hollywood does well to the point where people believe 
Wakanda Wakanda's a real place. <laughs> that irritates me, you know what I mean? So yeah. our language is just as important as creating a fictitious language for the sim, for, for the world of any other story to exist, you know? That's incredible. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much, very much uh, you, for doing this, uh, having coffee with me on a regular basis. <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, man. Yeah, Thanks, man. Man. Say hi to the family and take care. Well, too. Peace, family. Cheers. Where do these live?